What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ace Poker and today we have a new segment. I'm gonna take a clip from a high stakes poker stream. Today we have a $500,000 pot. I'm gonna go through the hands, tell you guys what I think, what I like, what I don't like. I'm gonna include some lessons. So make sure you guys watch the whole video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let's get right into it. All right, so in today's lesson, I wanna talk about tilt and how that affects you at the poker table. If you guys don't know what tilt is, it's when you lose a big pot and you get all heated, then you let your emotions get the best of you and you start to make bad decisions. So right now we're gonna go into the first hand and then it's the $500,000 hand. These are back-to-back -back hands and I'll show you why the $500,000 hand happens. So in this hand, a man by the name of Eric Pearson looks down at two red aces, the best hand in Texas Hold'em. They're playing a huge stake here of 200, 400, 800. The small blinds 200, big blinds 400, and there's an eight $800 straddle. So Eric decides to raise this one up to $2,200. Yes, $2,200. Alan Keating, a crazy individual, likes to get in the mix, decides to make the call with 7-8 offsuit. Obviously, that's not advised. He thinks otherwise. He's got a lot of money. He can do what he wants. JRB looks down at 9-6 suited of diamonds, decides to make the call as well. Obviously, as well, not advised. But he decides to get rewarded on a flop of 7-6-6. This is dangerous for all players. Obviously, JRB has trips. Aces are in danger. JRB decides to just come right out and bet $5,000. I kind of like this play. It looks a little weird. Usually you decide to check to the preflop aggressor, but he decides to go right out. And Eric decides to raise his pocket aces to $15,000. Now JRB has an interesting decision. There's no flush draw out there. It looks like Eric Pearson has an overpair. So he decides to just call $10,000 extra, bringing the pot now to $37,000. Let's see what the turn will bring and see if it'll bring any help to Eric Pearson. Now the turn comes a jack and JRB decides to check. This is a super weird line to lead out on the flop and then check. Seems like he was maybe trying to see what Eric had, but Eric raised it up. And now when JRB calls, Eric is super suspicious, doesn't really know what he has. So he decides to check this turn back. I actually like the check back on the turn because what is your opponent really going to have here that he's leading out and then calling? Seems to me like he'll have a lot of straight draws like... 4, 5, 8, 9. So you might want to bet this turn, but you do have to be wary of the 6. These players are playing very, very crazy. Money doesn't mean as much to these players as it does to the regular individual like you and I, but they decide to go check, check on the turn, and now the river decides to come the 5 of diamonds. Another really good card, but if JRB has 8, 9, now that makes a straight. So Eric has another hand to be worried about. And now JRB decides to count out some chips and bet $45,000. Eric Pearson announces a snap call before he can even think about it. I like the call here because there's really not much my opponent can have here. If he has a six, he has a six. The raise isn't going to get anything done because what worse hand is going to call you there? So I really like the just call here. But when JRB shows the 9-6, Eric lays out a sigh. And he's really, really pissed off. And I don't blame him because his aces just got cracked by 9-6 suited. He immediately reaches behind him grabs a rack, and he's going to rack up his chips and decide to get out of there. He does not want to be in the stream anymore, and I don't blame him. He is now on what we call tilt, ladies and gentlemen. He is pissed, and I don't blame him. I would be pretty pissed too, but that's where you have to control your emotions, and that's when this next hand comes in, and people say you should never play out of the rack. When you decide to rack up your chips, just leave. Don't get another hand, but the dealer decides to deal him in one more hand. So he decides to play this hand. He's definitely really pissed here as JRB is laughing it off. And I don't blame him. I would be fuming. But just take a walk. Take a deep breath. Bring yourself back to reality. You have to keep playing poker. I mean, unless you decide to leave. But then leave. Don't keep playing. Okay, I tried to play some of the audio. But basically what's happening here, like I said, it's a 200, 400, 800 game. There's a straddle to 1600. So the next player put out 1600 blind. Then the next player restraddled and put out $3,200 blind. So now there's like seven or $8,000, I can't do the quick math in my head, in the pot already. And Eric Pearson decides to look down at ace-queen offsuit. With all this dead money in there, Eric Pearson decides to raise this one up to $18,200. Yes, $18,200. Gets back to Alan Keating, the crazy individual, but he actually has a hand this time. Like I said, last hand, he called with 7-8. He has pocket fives here. He decides to call, and he flops a set, three of a kind. This is major problems for Eric Pearson. He just has ace-queen high, and he is fuming with two clubs. Eric Pearson is up first. As you see, he's in the third blind, and Alan Keating is in the cutoff. Eric Pearson decides to bet $20,000 blind before any of the cards come out. So now if you're Alan Keating, you have three of a kind, your opponent is steaming, and just bet out $20,000 blind. Do you raise here with three of a kind? I don't know. 
I just like the call here out of Allen. He decides to call the $20,000. Very good play by him. Your opponent is steaming, so let him just bluff off all his money. If he does have a flush draw and you're missing out some value on a raise, it's okay. I think I really like the call here. So now the pot has ballooned to $80,000. Well, $78,000 to be exact. The turn card comes a 7, a really good card for Allen. And now Eric Pearson decides to bet $50,000. So now Alan says, all right, let me grab some chips. I'm going to put in $50,000. He again makes the call. Now the river comes a seven. So Alan knows he has the best hand. Eric Pearson thinks, he thinks, Alan is probably thinking, please go all in. Please, Mr. Fuming, please go all in. Eric decides, he thinks, he thinks, what should I do? Alan's a crazy individual. Does he have anything here? Eric Pearson is looking down, he's looking down, I don't know what's going through his head, but he's thinking, and he's thinking for a long time. And he decides to put his rack in the middle, he goes all in for 150000 Keating snap calls him, says thanks for your money. He wins $250,000 in a $478,000 pot, and just like that ladies and gentlemen, one hand where you tilt and lose can lead to you losing so much money. Obviously, for the regular individual, you and I, it's not going to be $250,000, but, you know, this is a great example. And like you see here, he just gets up, walks away. I don't blame him, but he should have did that last hand. He could have saved himself $250,000. Kudos to Allen for playing this hand very well, letting his opponent bluff it off, but this is the lesson I wanted to bring out. Do not let tilt control your life. Don't let it control you. Even outside of poker, if you're really pissed off, just calm down. Think before you make a lot of actions. And like you see here, this is a picture-perfect example. Tilt can ruin your career. It can ruin your poker game. This was crazy. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you guys want me to make some more of these kind of videos. I really, really, really enjoyed making this. Let me know what you guys think down below. And just, wow, leave a like for the craziness.